Disputes come and go, but what everybody remembers are the dead. Which is why it's surprising that no one's mentioned that the bloody Sydney airport brawl in March isn't the first time that Mascot has hosted the murder of somebody close to the Hells Angels. In fact, it was almost 40 years ago that the Angels first came a cropper near the airport. In November 1972, a member of the then unofficial Angels chapter was gunned down by seven members of the Finks as he approached the Angels mascot clubhouse. When he died, there were about a dozen outlaw clubs already entrenched in Australian society and included such names as the Gypsy Jokers, the Rebels, the Coffin Cheaters, as well as imports like the Hells Angels. Back then, the clubs had yet to realise the profitable links to be had by working with organised crime groups, though some were already said to be involved in the amphetamine market. Many say it was the Hells Angels who introduced the amphetamine production process into Australia. Clubs were also involved as tough men in various other industries, such as car rebirthing and bouncers at pubs and clubs. But despite what the tabloids would have you believe, the clubs weren't criminal organisations. Most of them were formed by working class men with a chip on their shoulder, and they liked the anarchic freedom associated with motorcycle culture. Clubs offered them some kind of belonging. Of course, along with that, sometimes went petty, sometimes more organised crime. In 1973, the Common Shero were formed by Scotsman William Jock Ross. They went on to become one of the largest clubs in Australia. Their formation was a direct antecedent to the most famous incident in the Bikey Wars, the Milpera Massacre. Internecine rivalries between members of the Commos turned to outright rivalry when a group met with the US Bandidos and agreed to start up a chapter here. That led to tit-for-tat violence and, eventually, a meeting at the Viking Tavern in Milpera. A huge team of detectives has set up headquarters at Bankstown Police Station. Police are still interviewing about 30 bike riders and are expected to lay a number of charges this morning. The violent confrontation has left seven people dead. Almost 30 people were injured in the raging gun battle between rival bike gangs, the Comancheros and the Bandido. Police were forced to stand outside and negotiate with some of the members who were still armed. It took half an hour for them to get the paramedics in. They had people they wanted, you know, and that's all it was. Then they just stood around. They didn't care. They just stood around. I was, I'll take an aim, all right. And they just weren't shooting anyone, or there would have been a lot more dead. Now, there's a swap meeting on. Do you know yeah, what started the good, argument? No, nah, that was a good turnout. That was a real good turnout. There was bottom. no argument. They there was no they, argument. They knew what they wanted. That's right. They just come through. They didn't argue. They just walked up and bang. That was it. Police are still searching for a number of... Over the next couple of decades, some of the chapters of the clubs involved in the outlaw scene began to appear more like organised crime outfits. They'd become deeply involved in the supply of amphetamine. The clubs had great resources when it came to moving the drugs and they offered protection to drug dealers who had always lived in fear of being muscled in on. During the 1990s, a nexus began to form between drugs and bikies. Some clubs began to get more involved in King's Cross, particularly the Nomads. During the 1990s, the then National President, Greg Craig, along with his brother Steve Craig and the then National Sergeant at Arms, Scott Orrick, became involved with the King's Cross nightclub identity, the San Sam Ibrahim. In July 1997, a police operation codenamed Oak targeted cocaine distribution in King's Cross. Police believed Oric, Sam Ibrahim and the two Craig brothers were involved. They were later cleared of any involvement. About the same time, Greg Craig handed over presidency of the Parramatta chapter to Ibrahim. This was unheard of. To become a member of a club is hard enough, but Ibrahim went straight from being a non-member to president of a chapter. At the time, the clubs weren't known for ethnic inclusiveness. The nomads to this day have a swastika in their livery. These were clubs run by often racist white guys and then all of a sudden they give a chapter to a Lebanese Australian guy who speaks with an accent. That infuriated some of the rank and file in the para chapter and they left. Over the next few years, Ibrahim opened the doors of the para chapter to a rogues gallery of southwestern Sydney crooks and the chapter became what is today recognised as the genesis of the Nike bikies in Sydney, perhaps Australia. No beer-swilling blue-collar louts, this lot wore white sneakers, t-shirts and expensive jeans. They were the dominant force in Sydney for at least a decade, and despite the odd drive-by or fire bombing, nobody really managed to touch them. A lot of the guys we're seeing today causing problems had their beginnings as bikies and the paranomads. Another hangover from the 1990s is the feud between the Rebels and the Banditos. In 1997, three Banditos were murdered at the Black Market nightclub in Redfern. It was allegedly over an affair that the Banditos' president had had with the Rebels' woman. 
though others suspected that was a smokescreen for the real dispute over the club's competing drug syndicates. The black market was the first big explosion in that war. Recently the wars fled again, partly because of the defection of a senior rebel to the Banditos, and also the Melbourne murder of the National Bandito Sergeant at Arms, Ross Brand, possibly by rebels members. We saw that violence bleed over into New South Wales at the end of 2008, with a series of tit-for-tat shootings between the two clubs in Sydney's southwest. Then came the turning point. Sam Ibrahim was jailed in December 2004, following a shooting at the Nomads Newcastle clubhouse. He was eventually found not guilty by a jury and released in 2008. But his absence from the Parramatta chapter spelled its downfall. Some of its members joined the Auburn-based Banditos, and a small group began to hang around under a new name, the Notorious Scorpions. So one of the largest, most powerful bikey factions in Sydney suddenly disappeared. This created a huge void, particularly with all of the nomads' places in the cross. Other clubs and criminal groups started trying to establish their authority, and much of the violence today can be traced back to the rise and fall of the Parramatta nomads under Ibrahim. Key groups involved in the push and shove were Notorious, a crime gang hiding behind a club's colours. 